Hey, what's up? My name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I go through the React challenges at FreeCodeCap.com. Right now, we're working on the first React challenge, Build a Markdown Previewer. And in the last videos, we set up our environment on CodePen, and uh, we did our HTML and our CSS. And I talked a bit about React, finally, and, uh, and how we have two types of components to choose from. Remember, a React application that's made up of these reusable components. And they can be class-based or functional components. So in the last video, I showed you how to, um, how to write a functional component. We store it in a variable. Um, this is an ES6 keyword, const, but it's just a variable. Um, and this is a fat arrow function. It looks a little bit different from uh, what you're probably used to. Um, but we return some JSX, which is um, which looks like HTML on the surface, but um, but actually um, there's a few minor differences. And uh, this JSX it gets like compiled into you know real HTML you know further down the line. Um, we take all of this, <coughs> excuse me, we take all of this, and we render our app component to the render target uh, div that's in our HTML document. And as a result, you can see it uh, right here um, at the bottom, the output. Now I'm gonna show you, <coughs> excuse me, there's some dust or some pollen out here. It's driving me crazy. It's driving my throat crazy. Um, so in the last video, I talked about, you know, there's functional and class components and we use them for like different reasons. Well. Now I'm going to tell you what that reason is. So, oh my goodness, uh, that was not a gun, uh, by the way. I am in Maine. And there are lots of guns here, but that sound was just an acorn falling from a tree. So don't worry, guys. I'm safe. Don't call the police. I'm okay. All right. So for very, for very like rudimentary, like very basic components without much functionality, you could probably get away with just your, you know, functional component. And, and actually, you know, in many React projects that I have built and that I have seen, um, my, my mother component or the, the component that contains or like holds all other components, that's usually a functional component. And, um, you know, that's, that's nothing special you know, chew it. It's just like holding and it's a collection of other components. However, if your components have more complexity and you need um, more than just uh, to return JSX, you need like some helper functions. And if your component must have state, then you absolutely need to use a class-based component. So if you need state, use a class-based. If you need to uh, have some other helper functions other than just returning JSX, use a class-based function, uh, use a class-based component. If your component is very simple, you don't need state, you don't need a lot of, you know, helper functions, and, uh, and it's, you know, if this component is really just a wrapper for other components, then functional, I think, is going to be okay. For this project, we only need one component, but I need to use state. So I'm going to take all of this, and I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll set it up in just a moment. But first, what is state? Okay, state is just an object. State is an object that your components have access to. It's data that your components have access to. And it's data that only that component has access to. So in React application, you, you'll have like many, many, many different types of components, okay? Um, and you'll have like a parent component and a child component. And you might have, uh, you know, uh, you might have different sibling components too, like they're on the same level, um, uh, you know, of like connection, same, you know, same degree of uh, of separation. Um, 
and normally uh, if you want to communicate to different components that gets a little tricky uh, a parent talking to a child component that's you know rather simple you use something called props and we're not going to use props for this challenge but definitely for the next challenge at free code camp we're going to use props um, if you want however the child component to talk to a parent or if you want sibling components to to talk to each other and to share information then that gets really complicated and you're going to need a library such as flux or redux in order to make that happen you know easily but if you just want to have some object some you know data object that only one single component is going to use, then that is state. And every class component has its own special state object. Okay, so that's why we're going to use class because I need to have some state, some component state. And uh, okay, enough talking. Let's uh, do some coding and let's make a class based component. All right, so I'm going to call it class app extends react component and give it some curly braces okay uh class this is a um, part of the new um you know es6 syntax um this is um th this is definitely something you should read up on um but but let me let me just kind of give you a quick overview so um i'm creating um i'm creating like a new like object construct it's kind of like an object constructor like like class this is kind of like a like an object that we can inherit from uh you, you might you know recognize this so if we have like function you know like person and this is just an example you know name age city and you you might have seen something like this before and you say something like this dot name is a uh, name and this dot age is age and this dot city is city and then you know down below you can say like var steven equals you know new person and then we can pass it some arguments like steven and uh, 30 and uh, san diego okay so this is a this is basically an object constructor and you can I mean this is probably not the best comparison and some people uh, will probably correct me but the the class keyword is is sort of like that okay um, you're creating like one sort of like model and we can create different instances uh, of that of that model so remember when I said like new person okay like the person is the model uh, well, in this case, the, the model, we're just calling it a class. So class app extends. And it's going to borrow some functionality from the React library, particularly from its component library. So that's why we need react.component. So class, ass, uh, class app extends React component. Then we have some curly braces. Okay. And when you're doing a class-based component, uh, you need to have a render method, okay, a render method, and your render method uh, returns the JSX. So um, before in our functional component, we just wrote return and then our JSX. Here we actually need a render method, and a method is just a function that uh, that's inside of an object, okay. In ES6, um, it looks a little different. This is how you do it in ES5. You would write something like that. All right, but in ES6, it's a little bit easier to do, less typing. You just write render, and that's it. And then inside, we need a return statement. Okay, and then we can test it out again. Hello. All right, and it should work. It should work. Yeah, there we go. I always uh, get nervous in these videos. It may not work, and I have to do some quick debugging. All right, so now this works, and this is uh, perfectly you know, great. This is wonderful. Um, all right, so let's just bang this out, 
Okay, uh, I am going to set up the, the basic uh, view and everything. So we need uh, to enclose everything in one div, otherwise we'll get that error. And I'm going to give this a class name. All right, this is an important distinction in, G, uh, in uh, JSX. So, you know, in our HTML, if we want to give something a class, it's easy. Class, and then we give it some value. So div class, container, div class, render target. In JSX, we can't do that. Why? Well, now class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. So we can't say div class, blah, blah, blah. It might throw an error. So just to get around that, we just say class name, and the, the N, this is capitalized. All right, and by the way, this, this class, this comes from Bootstrap. Uh, it's just, you know, helping with the styling and stuff like that. All right, I'm just going to close this right now. So we got our class, and I want uh, kind of like two columns. So first column, div, let's close that up, and then we'll do a second column, div, all right. And let's just give it another class name. All right, so call uh, column medium six. And then inside of that, I'm going to just put a header. So um, mark down. And then in here too, we'll do the same thing. Class name, column medium six. And then we'll do another header. Preview. All right, let's uh, look at our preview. Okay. Oh, cool. There we go. So we have uh, we have two columns in our Bootstrap uh, right here. Uh, so this is taking up uh, six columns right here, and this is taking up another six columns. Uh, okay, it looks nice. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add our text box. Okay. So let's see here, we need, I believe it's called text area, all one word. Um, and I'm just going to close it down right there. Okay, there we go. We got our uh, text area. That looks good. Um, let's see, I think there's a property on this called rows. And maybe it's like this. Oh, okay, good, good. So that's what I want. Oh, that's a lot of rows. Uh, let's just make it like 10. Okay, that's pretty good. And uh, you can also do some inline styling, um, like CSS in your JSX too. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we give it style. And then we're going to do one pair of curly braces. So um, you can actually, you know, put in JavaScript expressions and variables uh, inside of your JSX. You just need a pair of curly braces. Uh, so we need to pass in an object to this style property. So I'm just going to go ahead and do another pair. There it is. And I'm going to say with and uh, and in JSX, in the inline styling, you need to give it a string, even though it's like an integer. And you don't need to say pixels. All right, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's say 300 pixels. Okay, great. So that's awesome. We've got uh, we've got our text box, and and okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, now, if I if I type in here, okay, great, good, nothing's happening. Um, so uh, let's wire that up in the next video. We're coming up on 15 minutes, and I don't want this to get too long. All right, so. Press the save button. Oh my goodness. Not a gun, I promise. Press the save button, and in the next video, uh, I'll talk about how to wire this up, and uh, we'll finish the project then. Okay, bye-bye for now. Boop.